Hello, I'm Philip Chase. Welcome to my YouTube channel on the best of fantasy. In today's video, I'll be taking a look at Steven Erickson's Malazan Book of the Fallen. This is a series of 10 big books that begins with Gardens of the Moon and ends with The Crippled God. Now, I want to begin by acknowledging that I have not read novels of the Malazan Empire by Ian Esselmont, which are six books that are also part of the Malazan world. Now, just briefly, I'll explain that Erickson and Esselmont co-created this world in which the Malazan books uh, take place. And they did it while they were doing some role-playing games. And they each wrote their own novels in this world. So, I want to acknowledge that perhaps some of my criticism about the incomplete character arcs might be misplaced since I have not read the Esselmont books in, uh, in his series. So any viewers who actually have read both the Erickson book, Malison Book of the Fallen, and the Esselmont books, I'd love it if you would leave some comments um, explaining perhaps if these character arcs actually get filled out a little bit more. Now, I do intend to read the Esselmont books the next time I read Malazan Book of the Fallen, and perhaps that itself is a testament to the uh, esteem that I have for these books, the fact that I would read uh, these 10 books again and be um, driven enough to also take on the six books by Esselmont. And that is certainly a good sign of a great book when someone is, is excited to read it for a second time. And perhaps I will be less confused by the scale of it. Now, I don't want to sound like one of those um, fans who claims that only geniuses can truly appreciate Steven Erickson. But I do want to uh, acknowledge that I think he is more or less a writer's writer. And by that, I mean he's the kind of writer that you read and you just sort of stop sometimes uh, and admire a sentence and you think, wow, I wish I could write like that. Um, so a few writers like that, you know, like Neil Gaiman or Ursula Le Guin, these are not necessarily the most popular writers and the styles are very different. Stephen Erickson's style is quite different from those, um, but they all have that in common that they are writers' writers who uh, really know their way around a sentence. And I just want to acknowledge that on the sentence level, I think Steven Erickson is one of the greatest writers I've ever read. Malazan Book of the Fallen is truly massive and epic, as you can see just visually, but it's also daunting in a way that other large series like Wheel of Time or The Stormlight Archive or uh, A Song of Ice and Fire, it's daunting in a way that these, these other series are not. And I think the reason for that is that those other series, uh, as big as they are, they all have a huge cast of character. They all involve immense world building. But those other series are, like most other fantasy novels, character driven. Malazan Book of the Fallen is not character driven. In fact, and this may have something to do with uh, Erickson's background as an archaeologist, but I would say that he has more interest in culture uh, than in characters in some ways. So the focus in those other big series is much more clear than it is in Malazan Book of the Fallen, which is less character driven. Malazan is more dispersed and, and challenging due to the fact that it doesn't focus on a key set of characters and it includes not thousands, but hundreds of thousands of years of history. The characters, even the gods, are kind of like cogs in this vast wheel. And just as an example of how big this is, in the fifth book, after the first four books that sort of go back and forth between these various big plots, we're introduced to an entire continent. Yes, Erickson hits us with a new continent in the fifth book, as well as a new major plot. Now, I just want to say this is immersive, jaw-dropping world building. Truly impressive. It's a bit like, I don't know, when you go to an IMAX theater at the American Museum of Natural History and you watch a movie about the universe and our tiny, tiny, tiny place in it and you leave feeling almost insignificant. That's what reading the series can feel like at times. And one issue is that that scale can work against character building. Now, don't get me wrong, Erickson is brilliant at sketching vivid, interesting characters, but 
there aren't any satisfying character arcs to latch on to, so much as random appearances in this grand narrative. There are no less than three huge plots that gradually converge in the series, and the characters tend to get lost in that. They come and they go and they disappear for long periods, so it makes it hard to get attached to a particular character. Though, as I said, they can be very vivid and even funny. I should mention, Steven Erickson has a wonderful sense of humor. Uh, it can be very subtle at times, but it's really quite brilliant. But there is no good or evil, just a, an immense cast of characters that consists of humans and gods and various ancient races like Jaguts and Tiste Andi and Fork Rule Assail, all struggling for survival in alliances that come and go. In the midst of all this, there are no key characters that we identify with. No one is that important, even the gods. There's just a huge cast of secondary characters um, all amidst this huge backdrop. Perhaps this is a truer view of the individual's place in the universe, but it's a more impersonal narrative than we're used to, and it's not casual reading. Now, I want to talk for a moment about the influence of classical epic on Malazan Book of the Fallen. Uh, it's fairly evident that the Malazan Empire resembles, in some respects, the Roman Empire. It's acquisitive and it's multiracial, and uh, the, uh, it depends in large part upon the prowess of its military. Also, in an obvious nod to the Iliad and the Odyssey, uh, the first book, Gardens of the Moon, begins in medius race, in the middle of things. So the, the reader, breathless, has to just run to sort of catch up right away. And the way that Erickson portrays the gods also resembles what you see in the Greek epics, um, in the sense that they are always quarreling with each other, and they are uh, manipulating humans, and they are always grabbing for power, and they are vulnerable. And in fact, the line between humans and gods can be a bit blurry at times, and sometimes even uh, your occasional human will become a god, will become what's called an ascendant. Now just briefly, I'll touch on the magic, which is actually very interesting and well done in the series. Um, there are various warrens and holds upon which the magic user must draw, and various races have access to different warrens. And there are other kinds of magic as well. Um, for example, there are the soul taken. These are um, entities who can take other forms, such as dragons and that sort of thing. So there's really, it's just too vast and too much to talk about in the space of this video. Uh, but Erickson does a really good job with it. And amidst all this magic and the vastness of this tapestry are the humans um, who survive with their wits and with their devices. Uh, most interesting are the various units of the Malazan army, especially the sappers um, who, has, who have various mechanisms to fight against this magic. Um, but they're really well done as well. The camaraderie among them, the humor, uh, perhaps resembling Glenn Cook's uh, The Black Company in that. And my final point about uh, Malazan Book of the Fallen is that there's some really brilliant social critique in these books as well. One obvious example being the capitalism of the Leatheros Empire. And Erickson has some really clever departures from fantasy tropes. He's a very original, uh, just an amazing writer on so many levels. Even though Malazan Book of the Fallen might be too demanding for some readers, it is brilliant and it is vast and it is complex and challenging. And for all these reasons, I certainly put it among the best of fantasy, one of the greatest achievements really in fantasy, and I think a must read uh, for the true aficionado. In my next video, I'll be talking some more about uh, the best fantasy of all time, so I hope you will consider joining me for that. And if you enjoy this content, please do like and subscribe. I'd love to read your comments, and I hope you'll join me in the future. Till next time.